Hello, guys, and today we are going to be talking about Evangelion once again, but today we're going to be doing something very different and actually just talking about the rebuilds and why I don't think the rebuilds are very good. By the way, if I sound a little weird in this video, I'm coming down with a cold as I'm recording this, so I probably sound a little sick. But yes, the rebuilds of Evangelion. There are three of them, and they are basically another version of the story. They're a retelling. They're told in the form of theatrical movies instead of a TV series. And as of this moment, we are still awaiting the fourth and final film. We know nothing about it as of the recording of this video. So this video will mainly just be me touching on my problems with the rebuilds overall. And I will probably be making a video in the future as something that I believe could happen in the rebuild and discussing a possible theory, which could make the rebuild really good. But first, I want to contextualize in this video what I think of the rebuild. So why don't we start off with why I don't like Evangelion 1.0. My problem at 1.0 is that aside for a couple minor things, it basically the prologue arc condensed into a movie. They basically took the content from episode 1 to 7 and put them all into a movie and cut out things that they felt were unnecessary. In general, I don't like when studios do this, when they take an entire arc of a series and condense it into a movie. It almost never works well. But here I think it's especially bad, because honestly, Evangelion isn't really story-driven. It's driven by its characters and their interactions and delving into their problems and their psyche. It's about the characters, and at the end of the day, the characters and their interactions and their relationships are what draw people to Ava. There are very few, if any, people that will tell you, I watched Ava for really cool mecha battles, because that's not really what Ava is about. So when you take an entire arc, like the prologue arc, and condense it down into a movie, basically what happens is you lose out on a lot of that meaningful time the audience gets to spend connecting with the character. The plot can be put on the back burner a lot, to focus on the character, which is the big appeal of the series. Like in episode 7, the most important thing in that episode isn't really the stuff with Jet alone, but it's establishing Shinji and the comfort he has found in his home life with Miss Sato before Asuka shows up and moves in in episode 9. They are able to spend an entire episode just focusing on Shinji's current mental and emotional state while he's living with Miss Sato. It also makes us, the viewer, aware of how often presence affects the Kastaragi household. And I personally feel that when you turn the arc into a movie, you just don't get to spend enough time with these characters. But that's really my only problem with 1.0 because it's basically the prologue arc. Like, the actual content is fine, it's just too condensed and rushed, but the content itself is basically the same kind of stuff that's in the prologue arc. And I like that stuff, so... But now let's move on to talking about one of the things I have more issue with, that I think are more legitimate, which is Evangelion 2.0, You Cannot Advance. Now, I will admit, I like the slice of life stuff in this movie. This is the kind of stuff I like with Ava. Just exploring these characters and how they interact on a daily basis. I've always found that really fascinating. However, they did some things in this movie that really bothered me. So I'm just going to get it out of the way right now. What they did to Asuka in this movie is horrible. First of all, I have no idea why they changed her last name to Shikanami. I honestly don't know. I think it's really bizarre. It's not even a criticism, it's just something I don't understand. Every other character kept their original name, so I'm really not sure why they changed Asuka's last name. It just doesn't really make sense to me. I can't think of a reason of what they would gain from calling her Shikanami instead of Storyu. She has the same middle name, she's still Asuka Langley. She just Asuka Langley Shikanami instead of Thoryu, and it just doesn't make sense. I just felt it was unnecessary and kind of weird. But what I really did not like is Asuka being super boy crazy about Shinji and being open about it. I'm by no means saying Asuka in the TV series wasn't into Shinji. She was very into Shinji, but she wasn't like open, boy-crazy, stereotypical teenage girl and cooking you lunch into Shinji. But Asuka being so openly into Shinji just makes her a lot less interesting in my opinion, 
Yeah, one of the biggest things in the original series was that Asuka was annoyed by all the boys her age because she found them immature and she wanted to be with a man like Kaji because being with a, not, with a nice adult man like him would validate her and allow her to view herself as an adult. But in the rebuild, she really just seems like a typical Sundere stereotype girl. Like, she's just not nearly as interesting because she's just super into Shinji, she's open about it. She had like a cook-off with Rei for Shinji's affection. And we really get no information on her past. Like, we know nothing about this version of Asuka, and we're not hinted towards anything, but from the way she acts, she just doesn't seem like she has as much going on in the head as she did in the TV series. She's just not as interesting to me. Like, maybe they'll add more to the character in the next film. I doubt it, because there's only one film left, and I'm assuming they'll want to focus on the protagonist. But who knows? But speaking of Asuka being boy crazy, something I didn't like, but isn't necessarily a criticism, is the way they used Rey in the rebuild. Because I've never liked Rey as a love interest for Shinji. I just haven't, and I've never really viewed her as that. I viewed her as this being that loves Shinji and is fascinated by him, very similarly to Karu. But I've never been into the idea of them being romantically involved for a few reasons. One, she's a clone of Yui Hikari, which makes him basically kind of his mother. And if you don't want to say Ray basically his mom, then she's definitely at least basically his sister. What I really enjoy Ray is when she's this like quantum-like being watching over Shinji. And she's all powerful and she's appearing before him floating above the water of Bandit Evangelion. Or in the beginning of the series on that empty street. My favorite moments with Rei are things like her conversation with Shinji and End of Evangelion, where they're conversing philosophically and talking about instrumentality and worlds without pain. I just really like that stuff, and I find her much more interesting as this person that loves Shinji and is there for him and have philosophical conversation with him and helps him emotionally, but isn't in love with him. Because I've always found that really weird, as I said earlier. But I don't really consider this a criticism or a flaw of the film, because Rey isn't that different from the original character. She's just being used in a way that I dislike. But that's more on me than it is on the film, but I just wanted to bring that up. I would love to know how you feel about Rey and the rebuilds in the comment section down below, if you can tell me there if you want. But yes, I'm just personally not a fan of the way Rey is being used as more of a love interest in that film, I just don't like it. Honestly, the film itself is fun, like, the character interactions are fun, like, while I don't enjoy the Asuka stuff, I will agree there's some humor to it, it's funny, but if I'm being real with you guys, a big problem I have with the rebuild in general, and this applies to this film and the next one, is Mari. I just don't know how you could make me give less of a crap about a character. Like, there is nothing about Mari that makes me care about her at all, because we know nothing about her. And you may say we don't know much about Asuka either, but the thing is, Asuka's a pre-existing character. Even if she's different from the Asuka we had in the TV series, she's similar enough that we can get behind her and feel attached to the character and care. Mari we know nothing about. Like, we're introduced to her, and we know nothing about her. The way she acts also doesn't fit Ava, like, at all. She acts incredibly silly. She's, like, singing in her Ava while she fights. When she first shows up, she's, like, sniffing Shinji and saying he smells like LCL, her favorite smell in the world. Like, she just acts really kooky and quirky and kind of like somebody you would see in, like, One Piece or Naruto almost. Like, a super fun, cliche anime character. And while there is a theory that I think could explain some of this and that would make me like Mari, I'm not gonna get into it here, I'm gonna be making a video on it, but there is a theory I want to talk about that could fix all this, but that's all it is, a theory. 
and I am certainly sure everything will get explained in the final film and we'll learn more about her. But at the moment, I'm just not really invested in this character. Like, she's not even that involved in the story. She's just kind of there hanging out. Like, there's not even much of a focus on her. She's just almost kind of there. Like, she's just there. So, yeah, I'm not a fan of Mari. I wouldn't say I hate her. I would just say I don't really care. Like, I'm kind of like, why is she here? She hasn't really contributed anything. Like, there's clearly something going on with Mari, but we just don't know what it is. And there's not enough really going on to make me invested in the film because she's only been in the series for two. But yeah, I don't like Mari very much. And another problem with 2-0, Obviously, it's the same thing as the last one, which is it takes the whole concept of the action arc and condenses it down to a movie. Like, the stuff with Toji is just kind of lost because I assume they didn't want to spend the time on really focusing on Shinji and Toji's relationship. And because they were already focusing on Shinji and Asuka, they just put Asuka in Unit 3 instead. But one of my biggest problems with this whole series of movies would have to be at the end of this movie. When Shinji is trying to save Rei. I actually like that specific sequence of Shinji trying to save Rei and him pushing on and him screaming about how he doesn't care what it does to the world. He just wants to save Rei. I like all that. That is actually really good. The problem is everything else surrounding it and the effects it has on the story later on. First of all, we learn in 3.0 that Shinji, when trying to save Rei, causes a near third impact. We learned that, and he, what, and he killed a lot, a lot of people and nearly destroyed the world. But the problem I have with this is that when you go back and watch that scene in 2.0, Mistado is egging him on the entire time. She's like, Shinji, don't listen to your father. Do what you want. Pilot Ava for the reason you want to pilot Ava. Go save the girl, Shinji. Then he calls it near third impact. And then the movie ends and the next movie picks up 14 years later with Shinji just having escaped from Unit 1 core and then Misato hates him for what he did. Misato treats him in 3.0 like he's subhuman. He is not even given any human decency in that movie. And it's appalling coming from Misato, who was egging him on. Like, she was like, go do it, Shinji. She's just as responsible as he is because she didn't say anything. She didn't even try to stop him. I also don't like it because Misato has always been the person in Ava. She has always been this mother-like figure to Shinji that no matter how much he screws up, no matter what he does, She's like, this is a 14-year-old boy being forced into a situation he wants nothing to do with, that, has, that is suffering from depression, that has a lot of issues, and I'm not going to hold it against him. I care about this kid. She's always been this one consistent thing that always has cared about Shinji and been nice to him. She's the only character that across all Evangelion media has always been nice to Shinji. Besides in this movie, and I wouldn't mind it much if they were in different situations, but if you actually think about it, because Misato was egging Shinji on, they were literally doing the same thing. Misato was egging him on to save Rei, not knowing that Shinji could trigger third impact. Shinji was trying to save Rei, not knowing he could trigger third impact. There's no difference between the actions they took that day. The only difference between what they were doing at that time is that Shinji was actually physically doing something and Misato was advocating for something. And even if you want to argue she holds it against Shinji for what he did, she comes out of after being in Unit 1's core for 14 years, has a bomb strapped to his neck, is on a flying ship, is told nerve is the enemy, sees that his, his friend Toji's sister Sakura, who was like 4 last time he saw her, is like 15 now, and that Asuka has an age even though everybody else has, everyone seems to hate him, and he is told that the person he was trying to save in the first place when he got absorbed into Unit 1 core is dead. Asuka, when he goes to her for comfort and an explanation, he treats him like garbage too, and then when he wants to leave because everybody's treating him like garbage, they're like, no, Shinji, you can't leave. You have to listen to us. You have to stay with us to we're treating you like garbage. What are you doing? It just doesn't make any sense. Like, if they had done the logical thing and, like, explained to him what happened, 
Like, they can resent him all they want, but if they had given him an explanation, he may not have ran away, because he may not have been so terrified, and he may have understood why they were doing what they were doing. All he knows is that he woke up one day, everybody hates him, and his former guardian has dropped a bomb to his neck. It just doesn't really make any sense to me. Like, just the action of not explaining anything to him, putting a bomb on his neck and treating him like garbage, and then being upset when he leaves just doesn't, it just doesn't add up to me. Like, did they think he was just going to stay quietly and let them physically and emotionally abuse him and threaten his life? They also tell him he can never pilot an Ava again. So, like, you can never pilot an Ava. He asks why and they say nothing. Like, no wonder he left. It doesn't make any sense. Then there's also the fact that we are told that near third impact happened. And that the world is so terrible, and that Shinji did something so horrible, when we don't even see the rest of the world. It's very important. Show, don't tell. If you want to say Shinji has done this horrible thing to the world, show us how bad it is in the rest of the world. All we ever hear is that Shinji did something bad, but we never see the bad thing he did. Thus making it really hard to swallow the pill of Misato and Asuka treating Shinji like lower than human, like a subhuman, almost like a slave with a bomb collar around his neck. We also are told nothing of what happened in those 14 years, and all my other problems kind of culminate here too. Because we know nothing of Asuka's character, we can't even begin to really speculate why she's so angry beyond Shinji did something really bad that we're never actually shown the effects of. After he escapes from the clutches of the abusive Misato and goes back to Nerve, that also becomes a part of the movie I don't like, because he kind of just wanders around Nerve with Rei and Karu for like 40 minutes. Like, things happen, but like, none of the things we want to be explained or need to be explained are explained. I don't even really understand what Nerv does in this new post-Near Third Impact world. Like, nobody else seems to be working there. The place is deserted beside for Rei, Fanyuski, Gendo, Karu, and Shinji. Like, there's no one else there. So I'm really confused as to what is going on with that. Like, is Nerve still funded by the UN? Is it still a thing? Does it still exist? Like, I just really don't understand. Like, nothing is explained. Like, the time when Shinji was at Nerve could have been used to explain what happened in the 14 years. And I don't mean to explain everything. This is Evangelion. When I say explain things, I'm basically just like, why is Nerve deserted? Like, why is no one here? What? Like, how does this place function? Who is paying for the life in this place? Where do you get funding for all this stuff you're doing? Because if you have to explain basic stuff like that or nothing makes sense. One of the only things I like about the rebuild in general is the stuff with Karu. Because I find it very interesting that when he first appears, he mentions meeting Shinji again. So it makes you wonder, is this like the same Karu from the series? An end of Ava? Like, is this that Karu? Because there is a whole theory that I am going to get in more when I talk about a, a, a theory I have. A whole idea I have for where this all could be going. It's based on ideas from other theories. I've basically taken a ton of ideas and put them together and formed my own little theory. But aside from a mystery involving, like, why the world seems similar to the one that was left over after End of Evangelion, and the stuff with Karu implying that he remembers the original series in End of Ava because he mentioned meeting Shinji again, I just can't get really get behind these films. Like, I'm sorry, but that's especially 3.0, which is just characters acting in ways that don't fit their characters with no explanation for the entire film, and some characters, like I said earlier with Misato and Asuka, just doing things that, in my opinion, don't make any sense based on what they want. Like, it's a known fact that if you want people to stay around you, you should treat them well? Or they're not going to want to be around you and they're going to try to get away from you. That's kind of a known fact of interacting with other people. But the biggest thing is that I actually really like the core concept of the idea of Third Impact being stopped halfway. And Evangelion becoming like weapons of war 
with like a group trying to resist Nerve and Sele and prevent certain paths of like Misato, Asuka, Shinji, all of them just trying to not have third impact happen. You have Sele with their version and Gendo with his version. That idea of like a three-way war to prevent and cause third impact in different ways is really fascinating, but I just don't like the way they go about it. I think it's a disservice to a lot of these characters, and it's just not my thing. If you like these movies, all the power to you. I just don't really like them, and who knows, this may all change. The next film may give backstory for Asuka, it may explain Mari, it may tell us a bit about what happened during the 14 years, it may explain why Misato and Asuka thought treating Shinji like garbage was a good way to get him to want to stick around, it may explain all this, or at least give us hints, to give us something to speculate with, it may give us something that will redeem this for me, but it's just not my thing. Am I excited for the next film? Of course I am. I mean, you know what, at the end of the day, it's Evangelion. I like these characters. I'm interested in where this is all going. And I have a theory that based on evidence I've gathered and other theories, that if I'm right about it, or if I'm even close to right, these movies could become my favorite series of movies of all time. But that all depends on whether or not the, the kind of thing I'm thinking of happens. Whereas I will be doing a video on in the future, I just wanted to give some context for my opinions of the rebuild before I got around to that. The theory video should be out within a week or two of this coming out. But yes, that's all I really have to say. This isn't really meant to be a review. This is supposed to just be me explaining what I think of the rebuild in like a haphazard way. And just being completely real with you guys about how I feel about the movie. Because I just think it will be good context for my theory that I'll be doing in the future. And I just want to be able to point this to people who ask me what I think about the rebuild because I have a lot of opinions as I've made it very clear in this video. But guys, tell me what you think of the rebuild in the comment section down below. Once again, please remember, this is just me being honest. I'm not trying to be legitimately critical here or analyze things. I'm just being like upfront, like this is what I don't like about the rebuild. This is why I'm not a fan of them. And it's also my opinion. You can love the rebuild. In fact, you probably do. Uh, like the comments that did it probably gonna be filled with people telling me they love the rebuild with my luck. But who cares? I just wanna know what you guys think. Guys, if you enjoyed the video, leave it a like. Tell me what you think of the rebuild in the comment section down below. If you want to hear me talk about Ava, ask me questions about it or anything else, you can follow me on Twitter, which is linked in the description box down below. Sometimes I'll start doing a mini Ava analysis out of nowhere that isn't really fit for a video where I just want to ramble about something Ava related. So if you guys are interested in any of that, definitely follow me on there. But above all else, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a great day.